everybody. Welcome along to Sports Bet TV. This is Paul Alster here once again with your weekend racing tips for Saturday the 28th of November with some terrific racing in Britain and Ireland. Uh, Newbury, Newcastle, they're the two uh, feature cards of course, but there's plenty of other good action, uh, the length and breadth of the uh, British Isles. Now last week I made the point that um, this service, we're not looking to tip short priced horses and uh, we're always trying to find the value and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And after a couple of quiet weeks, we roared back to form and uh, in great style too. I hope you were on, I know a few of you were, and you took the 12 to 1 recommended about Barnaby Dawn over at Nace in the Brown Lad Handicap Hurdle. Uh, and he came and did the business. He travelled very strongly throughout under David Mullins for the Thomas Mullins Yard and he stayed on really well in the closing stages. Now he returned at 9-2, to two. he was a major gamble. That does allow for a couple of non-runners uh, but still the 12-1 to one that was recommended uh, would have uh, paid for a, a lot of uh, pre-Christmas presents I suspect. And it was also so very nearly a very big double because Umbrigado at Haydock recommended at 7-2 to two. Uh, was trading 2-1 to one on as he jumped the last, uh, only to jump it awkwardly, lost momentum, and in the end he stayed on strongly again in the closing stages, but could only finish second. Uh, so very nearly 100-1 to one plus double, but also a very profitable each way 17-2 to two shot. So, let's see if we can do something similar, or even better, uh, this Saturday, where we have three selections for you. And uh, the first two of them come at Newbury. The first at 2.25 in the listed handicap hurdle known as the Jerry Fielden handicap hurdle at Newbury. It's over two miles. And there's some very interesting runners here. Quite a few of them are unexposed. Uh, Marie's Rock is unbeaten. Probably going to go off favourite. Botox Hass is very interesting for the Moors. And the one at Cheltenham last time. And Time White, another interesting runner who is very unexposed. But if you follow us regularly, you'll know that twice over the last four or five weeks, I've tipped a horse called Sebastopol, uh, trained by Tom Lacey in the Mount of Jonathan Burke. And twice it's been a non-runner. On both occasions, there was heavy rain, the ground went soft, and they decided not to run. Now, uh, patience is a virtue, and if that is indeed true, then Tom Lacey and Jonathan Burke are going to be rewarded at some point, and it could well be uh, on Saturday, because Sebastopol is a horse who really likes decent ground, and that is what is forecast at Newbury uh, for this weekend. This is a horse who uh, hasn't run since February, uh, but he won very impressively then, taking the Scottish County Hurdle up at Musselburgh. Uh, that was off a, three, a six pounds lower mark, uh, but he's a horse who is considered to be very progressive by connections, and is a winner of three of his six career starts. Now also, the Tom Lacey Yard has been in great form uh, this autumn and they've got a 29% strike rate of late. So I'm very optimistic Sebastopol is going to run a really big race and I think if it stays dry there could be good money for him. Now because of that I'm recommending you take the best odds on offer at the time of this recording uh, late Friday morning, Friday lunchtime. Uh, it's offered at 17 to 2 each way with William Hills and there's a new company around called VBET that's offering 9 to 1 each way. So 17 to 2, 9 to 1 each way uh, for Sebastopol, uh, patience to be rewarded. First time out this season, having been a non-runner twice over the last few weeks, and that is in the 2.25 race at Newbury. Now the 3 o'clock race at Newbury is the race known as the Labrooks Trophy Chase. That's what it is, the grade 3, 3 and a quarter miles, £200,000. But for me and for most uh, died in the wall racing fans. This will always be the Hennessy Gold Cup. It's the first really big major handicap chase of the season and as ever it's attracted a marvellous field. There are 18 runners this year. We can go back to so many great uh, memories. Last year of course it was Darasha Counter uh, who provided a bit of a surprise for Emma Lavelle uh, but of course there are so many great memories including none more so than the dual winner Denman who was absolutely outstanding, the Gold Cup winner. Well, this year, you can, as they say, make out a case for most of them. And I've looked up and down the list, and there's nothing you can actually 
completely rule out even a couple of the rags at 50 and 66 to 1. So for the short list, they are betting 6 to 1 the field. It's a very open renewal. Uh, I think Vindication is sure to be there about after that great run behind surname at Weatherby, a race in which uh, I Wright, the Scottish Raider, was a very good third. I'm not sure I Wright will be uh, quite as well suited by Newbury, though, but Vindication, I think, is going to go very close. Now, the conditional, he was second in this race last year, ran an absolute blinder, but he's £10 higher, and he'll do well, I think, to uh, repeat the feat. Cloth Cap is very interesting for John Joe O'Neill, third to Frodon in that hot race at Cheltenham. Do you remember, we tipped you Frodon at good odds when he won there at Cheltenham. And Beware the Bear for Nicky Henderson was fourth in this race last year, and he's running off the same mark, and he uh, hasn't been out yet this season, but that for him is a positive because he's a horse who goes really well when fresh. So Beware the Bear is interesting. And Potterman, who was beaten by that match in the Badger Beer Chase at Wincanton recently, is another interesting runner for the Inform Alan King. But I'm pretty sweet on one here. And this is Secret Investor, trained by the great Paul Nichols and ridden by Harry Cobden. Now those as old as I will remember Paul winning this twice as a jockey uh, with the likes of uh, Broadheath and uh, Play School uh, back in the mid-80s for David Barons. But of course he's won the race three times, twice with Denman, and he also won it in 2003 with Strong Flow. But he hasn't won it in the last decade, and I know he's very keen to get his hands back on this really coveted trophy. And I think Secret Investor is the horse to do it. He, of course, won the 2019 Grade 2 Future Novices Chase, Adair, and that is often won by a very good horse. Um, he's also, uh, last season, run a cracking race here at Newbury, and it was only Native River who we found too good for him, a Gold Cup winner. Now, he hasn't ever run quite this far, but he does give the impression he's going to stay. Now, the horse underwent wind surgery uh, over the summer, and that, for me, appeared to have done the trick and really improved him, because he was tremendously impressive after eight months off, when he slammed Potterman at Chepstow last month. Potterman reimposes on six pounds better terms for seven lengths, but I can't see him turning it around. I think Secret Investor is very progressive and the wind operation seems to have helped him get his breathing right. And if that indeed is the case, uh, over this extra distance he's going to need it and in this better class, but with a trainer who knows how to win the race, uh, both as a jockey and a trainer, of course, I think Secret Investor is the one they all have to beat. And the standard odds at the time of this recording is the 12 to 1 each way offered by Bet365 for four places. There'll be some that will go five places, and there might be some that offer bigger, but I think 12 to 1 is a rock-solid price, and I'm with Secret Investor to win the Hennessy Gold Cup, the Labrooks Trophy Chase, as it's known, the three o'clock race at Newbury. It's going to be a wonderful spectacle. Whatever wins, let's hope they all come back safely, both horses and jockeys. And then I'm throwing a bit of a, uh, a curveball here from, uh, from sort of out of the park. Newcastle 315 is a three-mile handicap chase. It's the listed rehearsal chase. It's often won by a good stay. In fact, beware the bear who goes in the big race at Newbury a few minutes early. I won this just a couple of years ago. Now, there are quite a few with chances here, but there's a horse that has been such a star over the years, and they're persevering with him, and I can't believe they're still trying uh, to win races with this horse if he hasn't shown enough at home uh, to uh, win more races still. And the horse in question is York Hill, four times a grade one winner. Now, he won all those races, 10 in fact, for Willie Mullins in Ireland. He's been an absolute superstar. Uh, this is a horse who's won the Tolworth Hurdle, uh, the Neptune Novices Hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival, the Mersey Novices Hurdle at the Aintree Festival, and he won the 2017 JLT Novices Chase. He's a bit of a nutter, uh, to be honest. He's got a mind of his own, but he's got immense talent, but he seemed to have just gone a little bit sour at Willie Mullins, and he didn't complete a few races last season. And interestingly, he's now uh, been sold and moved to Sandy Thompson in the border country uh, in southern Scotland. Now, Sandy is a tremendous trainer, and he's going to be ridden by Grand National winning jockey Ryan Mania. 
Now York Hill has had the one run for the yard. He only joined them six weeks ago and they run him in the grade two Old Roan Chase at Aintree. Now I sat down last night and I watched that race. It was a terrific race won by Nutswell and I was watching like a hawk at uh, York Hill and I had my race reader head as I used to be quite a few years ago and I'm watching this horse who's come down the weights who looks to be a, a lighter of former days and for the most part he travelled as if the ability is still there and even though he was towards the rear of the field as they jumped the fourth last he was no more than five or six lengths uh, off the lead in a tightly grouped field but all of a sudden he stopped and he stopped to nothing and dropped away now that's normally the sign of a horse choking or having a breathing difficulty. And so it's no surprise for me to see that Connections have put the tongue tie on for the first time. If you don't know what the tongue tie, it's a very simple device or piece of equipment. It's just a piece of cloth that ties the horse's tongue to its lower jaw uh, so that the tongue can't fall backwards while the horse is running and block the airways, which can happen uh, with horses. It sounds a bit gruesome, it's not, but it just stops the air getting through and they can't breathe properly, so they have to stop. Now, with a tongue tie on, that's not going to happen. If the ability is indeed still there, and I believe it is, and having been dropped six pounds now to a mark of 142, when not that very long ago he was winning good races off the mid uh, 150s up to 160, I think that York Hill is going to run a really big race. I wouldn't be putting big money on it, but I'd say each way, and he's across the board 25 to 1 each way, and have a couple of bob each way. Uh, on York Hill, who's been such a grand performer, and I can't believe they'd be persevering with him if they don't think there's still a decent race to be won with him. So York Hill, 25 to 1 each way in the 3.15, the rehearsal chase at Newcastle on Saturday. Those are my three. I hope they're all going to run well and we get a bit of a shout, and hopefully we'll get a winner or two or three, and we'll follow up last uh, week's winnings. And I hope you'll join me next week here at Sportsbet TV. Remember to press the red subscribe button so you can follow all my bulletins. I wish you a great weekend. And of course, we'll be back same time next week with more really good tips on British and Irish racing. Bye bye for now.